The vast majority of people don't commit suicide because they want to kill themselves, but as a way to end the torment of not being able to cope with their problems. Think about that for a moment. And so if someone is feeling a desire to isolate themselves, leading to a higher risk of having suicidal thoughts as a result of ultimately not feeling capable of coping with their problems, which is extremely common, and they don't currently know what strategies they can use to help themselves with their problems and mental health challenges, this is exactly why it is absolutely essential that they seek help from others and why we all need to learn about how to support someone experiencing mental health struggles. Because sometimes we struggle to get perspective on our own situations and challenges, but by sharing about our struggles with someone else, they can support us and help us gain a new perspective and identify new strategies we can use to help ourselves. And remember, we often need to try out multiple strategies in order to start figuring out what the right approach is to help us make progress in our situation. And please don't underestimate the power of progress, even small, slow progress, in helping someone feel optimistic that they can go on to fight another day and continue to seek additional support. Our mental health is complex and we all have our own journey. So it is not your job to go and try to fix your friends and family, but it is your job to just be there for them and to walk by their side as they take baby steps to create some form of progress with whatever they're feeling stuck with. National Suicide Prevention Week is coming up in the US next week, and according to the World Health Organization, more than 700,000 people die by suicide every year, which is one person every 40 seconds. Whether it's you or someone you know who's struggling with their mental health, we should all be playing a part in suicide prevention and in supporting each other. And so in this video, I'm going to walk you through five action steps you can use to support someone who may be having suicidal thoughts, which were created by the National Action Alliance for Suicide Prevention and the 988 Suicide and crisis lifeline in the US. And you can find detailed information about these strategies on the website www.bethe12.com. Step one, ask. You can't help to prevent suicide if you don't know if someone is suicidal or not. You need to ask them if they're having suicidal thoughts. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, that seems like such a personal question to ask someone and I'm not really sure how I could go about doing that. Well, that is exactly why we are talking about this and working to normalize the action of asking this question to people we care about. Because what if someone is having thoughts of harming themselves or they even have a plan of how and when they're going to do it and we don't ask them because of assumptions that we're making that they don't really seem that bad. You don't know unless you ask them. I want you to all learn from my mistakes. When I first started out working as an advisor with university students years ago, I'd received training on how to assess and support students with mental health concerns or who were at risk of having suicidal thoughts. But receiving training and actually putting that training into practice the first time I came across a student who was clearly at risk were two different things. So the first time I was speaking with a student who disclosed to me that they were really struggling with their mental health, I kind of danced around the topic because I was too nervous to directly ask them. I asked a lot of questions to see if they had support at home and from a counselor, but honestly I was too scared to ask the real question of if they were having thoughts of harming themselves. And guess what? I didn't ask them. I made an assumption that they were probably okay based on what they'd shared. However, thank goodness I'd scheduled a follow-up appointment with that student because when they came back a week later, they disclosed to me that they were in fact suicidal. And at that point, of course, I put the rest of my training into action. But the point is you should never ever assume. You always need to ask. And what's the worst thing that might happen if you ask and the answer is no? Well, I'm optimistic that that person will understand that you asked the question out of love and a desire to support and protect them. And you know what? What if the answer is yes, that they are having suicidal thoughts? Well, then thank goodness you found out and you now have the opportunity to help them figure out their next steps of seeking support. And you can use whatever words feel most comfortable for you. Are you having suicidal thoughts? Are you thinking about suicide? Are you having thoughts of harming yourself? I want you to think about how many people are impacted when someone commits suicide. It doesn't just impact that one person, it impacts every single person in their life. So this hesitancy about overstepping into their personal business by asking this question just isn't valid. If someone you care about is having thoughts of harming themselves, it is your business to know, and it is your job to ask them. Please remember how scared and lost they likely are. And while they may be too afraid to initiate asking for help, if you ask them a 
direct question to find out if they're having thoughts of harming themselves, that that could literally save their life. Studies show that asking at-risk individuals if they're suicidal does not increase suicides or suicidal thoughts. In fact, studies suggest the opposite. Findings suggest acknowledging and talking about suicide may in fact reduce rather than increase suicidal ideation. Step two, be there. Being there for someone experiencing suicidal thoughts creates a sense of connectedness. Whether you're there for them physically in person or even just over the phone to offer emotional support, even if you don't know all of the answers, which nobody is expecting you to, by the way, just by being there to support them can be life-changing so that they know they're not alone and so that they know they have someone by their side to help them figure out the next steps of getting additional support. Being there for someone with thoughts of suicide is life-saving. Increasing someone's connectedness to others and limiting their isolation, both in the short and long term, has shown to be a protective factor against suicide. Step three, keep them safe. In order to help keep someone who is at risk of suicide safe, we first need to know how imminent their plans of harming themselves are. First, in order to assess this, the be the one to.com website recommends asking questions like, have you already done anything to try to kill yourself? Do you know how you would kill yourself? Do you have a specific detailed plan? What is the timing for your plan? And what sort of access do you have to your planned method? By finding out answers to these questions, you can then take steps to help remove the person's access to lethal means or their chosen method for a suicide attempt. And if this step seems daunting to you, then please reach out and call a suicide prevention hotline in your area to ask them to walk you through what you should ask and how you can help keep the person in your life safe. They are there to help you. I've included a link to a list of suicide crisis phone numbers by country in the description of this video, along with a few other helpful resources. Or you can also just do an online search for suicide crisis support lines in your area. And second, another important part of keeping someone safe is to help them create a safety plan. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to a website called mysafetyplan.org, where you'll find a free tool to help create and download a customized safety plan that can be used to identify coping strategies and sources of support. It can help to identify what can lead to thoughts of suicide and how to feel better if the at-risk person is having those thoughts. It will help them proactively identify who they can reach out to when they need support, and as a result, they can help them themselves to stay safe. Please note that if you are speaking with someone who is at immediate risk of committing suicide, whether you're there with them in person or just over the phone, please call 911 in Canada or the US or the emergency phone number in your country. You can also go to the nearest hospital emergency room and ask for help, and you can contact a suicide prevention hotline in your area. Again, I've included a list of suicide crisis phone numbers by country around the world in the description. So please take a look at that and seek help immediately. A number of studies have indicated indicated that when lethal means are made less available or less deadly, suicide rates by that method decline and frequently suicide rates overall decline. Step four, help them connect. Anyone who is experiencing mental health struggles, whether they're suicidal or not, should be reaching out for support from a mental health professional. And as a friend or family member, you can help someone who is at risk with getting connected with professional mental health support that can be an important part of suicide prevention. And you can do this by asking them questions like, are you currently seeing a mental health professional? Have you in the past? Are there any options for you that may be covered through your work, school, or family to cover the cost of professional support? Are there other mental health resources in the community that can effectively help. If you or the at-risk person you're talking with don't know the answers to these questions, then take this as an opportunity to do some research together to see what's available. If you're still stuck and aren't sure, then try talking to other people in your life and you can always call a suicide prevention hotline in your area together to ask for support in figuring out what services may be available. You can also do an online search for free or low cost counseling or therapy options in your area or check out online counseling services like BetterHelp or Talkspace, which I'll link to in the video description. Step five, follow up. After your initial conversation with someone at risk of suicide, be sure to follow up with them. Is there anything you said you would do to support them that you need to follow up on? Ask them how they're doing. Ask them if they follow through on anything they committed to doing, like meeting with a mental health professional or creating their safety plan. And ask them if there's anything else you can support them with. Following up can increase the person's sense of connectedness with others, and we've already talked about how important that is. Studies have shown a reduction in the number of deaths by suicide when following up 
was involved with high-risk populations after they were discharged from acute care services. Studies have also shown that brief, low-cost intervention and supportive ongoing contact may be an important part of suicide prevention. The average person doesn't receive training on what to do in a situation when someone you know seems at risk of suicide or if they disclose to you that they're having suicidal thoughts. And while it's important to leave the providing of professional mental health services to the professionals, there are absolutely some positive and constructive things that you can do as a friend or family member to support someone you care about who is experiencing a mental health crisis. To summarize the steps you can take, remember to ask, be there keep them safe, help them connect, and follow up. Next Monday, I'll be posting another suicide prevention video for anyone experiencing mental health struggles themselves with information on what they can do to help themselves. So please be sure to subscribe and come back to watch that as well and to share these resources with the people in your life to help prevent suicide.